Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ecom Unfiltered. Um, today, I'm really excited to have this guest with us. Uh, he's actually an 8Fig customer. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting him back in August at Black and Ecom. Um, Super great guy. Love chatting with him there. Figured he would uh, probably want to join me on a podcast. Uh, and that is Brandon. He's one of the founders of Baobab Clothing. And he just corrected me to make sure I said it the right way. Uh, but we're really excited to have him. So thank you so much, Brandon, for being here. Katie, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, this will be a good one. Okay. Um, so we'll just go ahead and kind of dive in. I have a lot of questions to cover with you. But um I just wanted to start first with, you know, how did you get started in this business and e-commerce and with Baobab? Um, what kind of inspired you and got you started? Yeah. So what, 2016 is when sort of the idea came to me, right? Uh, working in New York City, um, hustle, bustle, all the things, right? Um, and as a part of trying to create some type of just like, I don't know, productivity in my life and like consistency, I decided for like polo shirts to be like my go-to item, right? So I was reading books on minimalism and cutting out waste and all the things. So I'm like, okay, I'm only going to wear polo shirts. I bought a ton. You know, I spent money on the expensive brands, the luxury brands, spent money on the, you know, sort of fast, fast fashion brands. Um, and one thing was consistent is that no matter you know, what I did, like, uh, you know, in terms of washing, how, however long I owned them, they all sort of failed in the same way. Right. And so yeah. I'm like, okay, what's like, is that, do I have to just keep buying polo shirts? Do I have to keep taking them to the dry cleaner? Like, what does this solve? Right. So, um, you know, with that, you know, I, 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 you know, who's now my business partner, Marcellus, I connected with them just to ask him, he's my best friend, like, hey, do you know any brands that like last longer? Because I'm getting tired of like wasting money on polo shirts, right? This was literally just like a product fix for, for me, right? Like, how could I fix it? So he said, no, you know, like, I don't think they, I have all the same issues, you know, baking collar, fading, shrinking, um, you know, I, I'm also a bit messy. I spill something on it, then the shirt's ruined, right? Um, and so, you know, out of that, you know, he couldn't think of anything. So he suggested, hey, like, if we can't find it, like, why not create it ourselves, right? And then around that, you know, thinking about, like, there are other people like us, right, who just, like, you know, they're busy, but they care about looking their best, right? They have, you know, to go to work, they want to hang out after work or whatever on the weekends and don't want to quite think about, you know, what's going to be reliable for me, what's going to have me look my best. And so we wanted to build a brand, first a product um, that, you know, was the top of the line, top of market, um, and then sort of a customer base and community that aligned in the way that we sort of saw things. And so that's how the company sort of came about. That was the birth. Of- wow, that's cool. Yeah. And that's smart. I feel like, you know, my husband wears polos and I know he's had some of those same issues you mentioned. So I think it's cool that you found a solution to it and uh, that you kind of went all in on it. Um, so what like so I saw a slogan on your website and it said, um It's not just a polo, it's Baobab. So I want to talk about like the materials you're using and kind of what makes it so different from other brands on the market and like why it's better. (laughs) Yeah. So we, we took the approach, you know, there was an e-com like, uh, you know, I guess a couple of years ago, right. This idea around like the one product, but better approach, right. You saw that in a lot of the companies that, you know, are out there like the ways and, you know, I guess a couple other brands out there, like let's create and innovate on this like one you know, thing and then expand from there. So that was our approach to the market. And so when we think about what's out there on the market, you know, when we were designing the shirts, right? Like we were, our goal was to go above and beyond what was already available, right? So how dare you try to compare me to, the, you know, the, the crap stuff that I was buying, right? In the product, right? So I don't want you to think of us as, you know, this, you know, the, the regular, we'd say like regular, regular, like this regular product, right? Like it's, no, it's a bailout, right? So we, we, our, um, you know, we, we have sort of our pillars that we look at in, in terms of product development. So uh, we give highest consideration to uh, quality, design, function, and value, right? And so that's what we sort of align with when you first design this shirt. But, you know, as we look at expanding our product lines, as long as they are in that, in, within that pillars uh, or those four pillars, um, then we're doing our job and we are designing for Baobab and the Baobab customer. Love it. That's awesome. Glad you're doing that. <laughs> um, so what can you tell me, like, 
about maybe some of like when you first started, what were your initial goals and then maybe any roadblocks you hit um, that changed the course of things? Um, just if other e-commerce folks are listening, um, just some advice and things. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, Where do I start? This is kind of, <laughs> right. <laughs> the first question and then like we just talk about this, right? No, I mean, there's so <laughs> many learnings and so many things, but you know, the, the goal, right? Like, you know, to build a unicorn, right? 20, 2017, that was the time, that was sort of the thing, right? Or 2016 was the first idea. But I mean, ultimately, like, and I, I kind of jokingly say the unicorn thing, but, and I think my business partner, I kind of like, this is where we did differ in this. Like, I simply wanted to create a brand that folks connected with, right? Um, that grew organically, right? You know, I think about, you know, the 100 year companies and, you know, like, let's say like Hershey or whatever, right? Like, you know, there wasn't about like raising millions of dollars to do things like you, you developed the product, you found a product that people loved, you continue to innovate, you just continue to develop more products and more people loved you. And, and that's how you build the relationship with your customers. Right. So I was very much in line, um, you know, with, with that approach. Um, and so, you know, that's what we started doing. Right? So but when we first were like, you know, trying to find our, our like our first sort of set of fans or customers. Right. Um, I think what we did and was smart, like was to when we were developing the shirt to validate because I have like a product, a product background, product marketing background. So sort of validate the hypothesis. Like I knew I wasn't wrong, but I just wanted to make sure, you know, like validating that. OK, other folks kind of see, you know, when we look at our singular product um, that there's issues, you know, they're, they're experiencing similar to us. So um, this was at a time when LinkedIn allowed you to like download your like the emails of everyone that you follow, right? So I, you can't do that anymore because I tried it, <laughs> but this was this was some years ago. I wish that was a feature, <laughs> right? Right. So what we did is we we uh, basically sent a survey out to you know five hundred or probably a thousand of our closest you know friends and associates or whatever, right? Uh, and 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 send a survey of like asking them sort of the same questions, right? Or, or like trying to validate our hypothesis and what we thought. So we leveraged that to build our product. We then uh, went on Kickstarter to to fund it, um, and so you know did the whole you know campaign. And th th those were some stressful times. I'm <laughs> sure. I've been doing this podcast for a little while now, and I feel like everyone is just like at first, it's like you have no idea really what to do or where to start. So yeah, it seems like yeah. a common thread. For sure. And one of the other things that I discovered is that there is no sort of like, like Google, you know, for like, you know, developing a, a consumer good or fashion brand, right? I'm starting to see folks on TikTok now like, oh, the, here's the hack to do, you know, whatever, like to, you just go to this site and that site and you know, a lot of what they're usually referring to when you see that is is sort of like um, still like white labeling, like, you know, or adding like your logo to something that's already designed, which, you know, I, I'm not knocking that business model at all. Like, I actually understand it now. <laughs> like, like, I was 100% doing that. And I still am just based on our product philosophy, but I totally get it and, and not knocking it at all. But, um, but yeah, like, I didn't have a background in, you know, in fashion, right? I didn't have a background in, in clothing, they're developing clothing. So I didn't know where to start. And, um, you know, I just started from ground one thinking that, okay, um, I'm going to get it produced in the US. That's the best way to produce, you know, best place, whatever. I reached out to a bunch of uh, factories and they all ghosted me. Like, they, oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, you know, you would. Like you would go far, far along because we had a ton of requirements too, right? Like we had like a lot of things that we were trying to develop and figure out. And like, you know, we would get to certain parts in the conversation and then like, I'm like, hey guys, like, you know, I've heard from you two weeks, what's going on? And they, you know, and so I, um, and this is, I guess anyone, well, I don't know if, like the full audience, but if anyone's thinking about, you know, sort of uh, consumer goods or fashion. So um, I was, you know, I, it was sort of serendipity. I was like lucky to find our current, you know, factory that produces for us. But I just, I was living in New York at the time, went to the Javits Center, which is like the yeah. large convention center. Um, and, and they were having a, a fabric, you know, convention. So this is basically, you know, fabric producers, makers of like, you know, buttons That's and all nice. the things, right? Like they, you know, all sort of gathered there. It's called Text World um, is the name of the conference. And, or the convention and like that's where I met our um, you know our, our factory like they and they didn't show like I was like I was not releasing all the requirements I was like 
I was like, every every email communication afterwards, like after I met with them, I was like I was kind of sneaking in little things, little things, and then like, and they weren't like you know pushing back, and they kept on responding. I was like, oh, this might work, and so work we're out. still we're still together to this day. Oh, <laughs> good. Still- well, hey, I mean, I'm good. that's glad, but you went to that convention because you yeah. might have you never would have known or been able to find one probably if you hadn't. So, yeah. but that that opened like. Attending that open, you know, the whole, that whole world, like that was like the key that I needed to unlock. Like again, like, cause there was no just going to Google, like, how do I, you know, I'm looking for yeah. the best spot in the world and, or I'm looking for, you know, it was like, it just, there was nothing that would take me to where I needed to go just by Googling. It's, it's yeah. an adequate, like business. Maybe someone should innovate. I don't know. Maybe I should or something. You know, my, my spare time or something. I don't know. Like <laughs> figure that out. But yeah. 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 That's uh, it's funny you mentioned that. So I actually majored in fashion merchandising like way back when. And yeah. I originally was like, I'm going to create wedding dresses. I want to be like a designer and work in fashion. Um, and then I would literally Google like how to do that. And I could yeah. never find anything that just like gave me the answer. And then obviously my life went a totally different direction. But yeah. um, but I'm glad you found that convention. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that was again the key for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um. So, like, what advice then? You know, just going through all those hurdles of like first starting out. What advice would you give to somebody who is starting right now? Yeah, and it's so funny. Like, you know, I guess I can be a bit of an oracle going through all the things, right? But, um, so I remember hearing, you know, uh, and this is my sort of like second business. Marcellus and I had like a, a tech company prior to, to um, uh, it was a SaaS company, right? So like the, oh. the unique economics and like, it, the, you know, it's complete, the business model is completely different, right? Totally different. <laughs> and so yeah, I would always hear from folks, you know, like never do a consumer goods business or a consumer goods business is so expensive. And I'm like, how like it doesn't make any sense like i just i didn't i couldn't grasp like just not doing it like how it was like so difficult right um and um it's starting to be able i now know firsthand like what they mean right of how difficult like, it is and so what i mean by that is is um you know just it's 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 capital intensive right especially developing a product from scratch right um and the Finding your 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 customers, right? Um, you know, there's one time, you know, let's say 2012, 2013, 2014, where like, you know, acquiring customers using Facebook was extremely cheap, right? Like, you know, and so yeah, it, it it's matter. Than it is now. <laughs> yeah. And as time has gone on, and then of course the 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 rollout of like the the new you know Apple or iOS, like it makes it extremely difficult to find folks um, and expensive to find, you know, new customers, right. right? And then also the novelty of like ordering online, right? Like you're, the market is saturated, right? And so mm-hmm. like, there's a new brand that comes up on my feed every day, right? Like, and not now, just like the introduction brand. of like TikTok, it's like yeah. TikTok shop, I'm seeing something new every single day. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Um, and so, you know, all of that, like you think about like acquiring your customers, building your product from scratch, when it's time to, you know, um, purchase your inventory. And this is where, you know, a fig, you know, has, has um, come to be like, I was <laughs> blessed to find this as a solution as well, uh, where like you think about planning your inventory and especially, you know, depending on your size and, and how long you've been in business, like for us, our, our productivity, our sales productivity um, has never been sort of consistent. Right. Like, and what I mean by that is, you know, one sort of like purchasing cycle, you know, let's say like extra larges are the things that people are buying, right? And all of a sudden I, I over optimize for extra larges, you know, for the next production. And all of a sudden everyone's a large again. You're like, wait, yeah. what? Like, what? Like, how is this <laughs> happening, right? Um, or like, you know, the, I would say the one thing that's been consistent is sort of like the, the color choices, like our, our, our um, I mean, I'm wearing our like emerald color today, but generally like our, uh, we call our essentials. So like the, the Navy black, you know, white, those yeah. are the, you know, so I can, I can always sort of depend on that, but that's probably the only consistency when it comes to like inventory planning. And so, you know, with a four month production cycle, right. So you put in an order, you know, you, you have to get to a point where you are able to establish credit with your, with your vendor. Otherwise you have to put up, you know, sometimes some factories are, you know, 30%, 50%, you know, 70%. We were lucky to have it was like 30%, but you still have to put up that money up front, right? Yeah. And, so, and then you're waiting for, you know, through like during COVID times, you know, up to five months 
um, you know, during the pan, like the heart of the pandemic. Uh, well, right. they were closed, you know, so that part. And then, so, you know, so we were selling because everyone's home buying stuff. And right. so they were out of inventory. But anyway, so, you know, once they opened it, it was still like longer production times. And so like you, you know, you have demand, but, you know, you're unable to sell because you don't have the inventory there mm-hmm. and you're, your capital is caught up in, you know, the production cycle. And so there's just like this lull period where just waiting for inventory, your capital is caught up in production. And so again, like having a fig there as a, as a, um, as a lender, right. A provider to say, okay, we're going to front you this capital at this point because you need it for your deposit. You know, um, you're going to have money also. We know that we want to help you sell this, right. So there is, you know, capital for you there. Um, and then, of course, like to close out or to complete the whole production cycle, you know, you're planning out your production and you have capital for that. So um, that's made, you know, um, it, it's made the process of going to production a whole lot less stressful, uh, for sure. Cool. Uh, we love a good eight fig plug. And yeah. for those listening, we didn't tell them to say that. You did not tell me to say that. No, that, that's a real. <laughs> so thanks for saying some good things. Uh, I mean, yeah, and that's what eight fig is here for is for kind of. Exactly what we were talking about, just like at that point in your inventory where you need a little support. So awesome. Yeah. Glad we could help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you touched on it a little bit when you were talking about your early stages um, and like marketing and kind of how you got out there. Like what are some of the marketing strategies you're doing right now? I know you talked about it's so saturated and it's gotten yeah. so expensive. So I'd love to just kind of hear what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, even when we started, you know, it was a big chunk. We were, again, trying to develop our, you know, sort of our fandom or network of folks that really love you know our product and so we did a de- like a pretty decent job there um you know we'd launched and you know, gone and just again living in new york like going to pop-ups right like it was mm-hmm. very much like not a scalable thing but something just to get ourselves out there get to know the product more, get to know our people more that sort of thing um what really helped us accelerate um is our appearance on shark tank um, oh, that, I didn't even realize that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that, we talked about that at the event. Now that you're yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Maybe yeah. Little, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it made it, it made the world a difference, right? Like you, you go from you know running some ads on Facebook, you know, or whatever, uh, you know, doing a sort of traditional, and I say traditional, you know, traditional social media marketing, right? You know, photos, you know, some some clever copy, and, and hopefully people buy, and they did, but. You know, it, it doesn't weigh into the the scale of Shark Tank and the five million people who watch your first episode or whatever, and then the you know the the number of times that it reruns and reruns. Like even to this day, it's not as much now, but I can I always know when the the episode runs. Like you yeah. get like an influx. Of- yeah, there's an influx. So like I'm like oh, okay, there's like a sale, 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 sale. You're like okay, cool. Oh, that's it's, cool. It's not, it doesn't. It's not at the same rate as like you know like the first like two or three years, but. Yeah, the, I mean, it's it's a gift that keeps on giving. So um, I love that. That's awesome. How was like? I'm. I mean, we probably already talked about this, but yeah. what was like that whole experience like being on Shark Tank? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's intense. It's you're ready for it, or at least uh, we were like ready for it to be over. <laughs> you're just like <laughs> like however it goes, right? Like the interesting thing about it, and the the thing that I'm not sure everyone's aware is that there's no there's no second take, right? And oh, so wow. what you see on air is a first take if you flub mess up do anything like they're either going to cut you or they're going to include it in there then you kind of look silly uh, right? you don't want to look silly i'd be so your... nervous <laughs> right 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 you don't want to be silly representing your brand and, and that's a tough thing i mean and generally I, I mean like when i have watched the show when i do watch the show like, i don't really ever see folks mess up i think i might have seen like one or two or someone gets nervous or something but yeah that's the thing that like you know i guess i never knew is that there's no second taste the other thing is that you're in there with them you know Sometimes, like, you know, we were in there with them for close to an hour. Um, but, you know, it was generally, like, anywhere from, like, 40 minutes to, like, an hour and 30 minutes. And, you know, but, you, of course, you don't see any of that on television. And you're, you're nego- like, you're talking and negotiating the entire time, right? It's, like, you only see oh, that, wow. like, five-minute segment, like, of you just in there. But, yeah, it's 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 pretty intense. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, so I can imagine you were ready for that to be over. And- yeah, yeah. And, I like, I also – I'm so much better at this now because, I guess – I've been hearing my voice a lot more, but like, I hate hearing my voice. So like <laughs> we had like a, a launch party or whatever, not launch, but like a uh, air, like, you know, party when we, uh, when our episode aired 
And um, like, I remember not wanting to watch it. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, no I, I was like, I know how it was. Like, it just, I could not, like, it, it took me probably, uh, this is honestly like two years until I got comfortable watching an episode. Oh, wow. I mean, that's how I feel even doing like these podcasts and stuff. Yeah. I'm just like, I hate listening back to myself and realizing yeah. I feel like I sound like a valley girl or something. And right, I'm like, right. ah. <laughs> right. like, I sound like that. You guys listen to me? Like, oh. I know. I'm like, you guys want to listen to this voice? <laughs> Right, right, right. Um, So I totally get that. But that's awesome that you're on there. Um, And then I'm imagining, was it a good outcome? Yeah, well, it was good in the sense of, like, it it helped, like, grow our company significantly. We didn't do a a deal with a shark. Um, But, again, like, the exposure that we got, like, again, there's nothing. It's like running running the Super Bowl ad, right? Like, you think about it from that capacity, like, you know, folks, it's a chance for folks to get to, to, to know you, to get to buy from you. And that was one of the cool things also is that, it's cool, but also like a bit, um, there's a lot of responsibility with it. But like those folks that come in through Shark Tank, like, yes, they love the product, right? Or or they wouldn't buy it, but they're also sort of buying you a bit, right? right? They feel like they're investing in you as, as a person, right? And so, um, you know, and it also comes with like folks think that, okay, now I can tell you like what you need to do next or whatever. Right. Cause they like, they're like, they feel like they're a part of like your growth and, and all the things, but it's, it is, I would say most of it, not probably all of it, but most of it comes from a great place, um, mm-hmm. which is cool. But, uh, but yeah, it's the, I'll say it's a gift that keeps on giving. Um, and, you know, I, I remember that day, like, so, cause we also operate our, um, our company on Shopify and so, like the 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 cha-ching sound, you know, like <laughs> that was the first time, like you know, I heard it go off that much in a row, right? So, like, like, yay. right, right, right. That's literally what I did. <laughs> I, like remember after, somehow. Like, <laughs> I remember after the doing part when, like, the cha-ching slowed down just a little bit, like another. But I still kept my phone on so I could hear it, and like oh. it was like you know I would do, literally do that every time, like yeah. <laughs> like, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. It's an addictive sound for sure. Like I'm sure yeah. you're like, oh, that's money in my bank, awesome. Right. That's, sure. that's that's really cool. So you kind of mentioned Shopify. Um, so I want to go back to the Black and Ecom event. Um, wasn't it you who came out with Shopify? They invited you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would love to just like hear your experience at the event. Um, did you have a speaking slot too, or am I making that up? No, no, no. I, I didn't no, okay. Speak. I think it was someone else I talked to then. But uh, yeah, I would just love to hear about your experience there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you know, like Shopify, best in class. You know, yeah. product when it comes to ecom, um, I, I could not imagine us like running the company like you know on, on another platform. Um, mm-hmm. And the event itself, right, like, is all about just, like, learning, connecting, growing folks uh, in e-commerce, right? So I was happy to, to be a part of that and to participate in that. And I got to meet great folks like you, you know, um, there. So, um, you know, that's another thing I encourage for, you know, folks and entrepreneurs, like, you know, to network and connect as much as possible. Be, I mean, your time is also valuable, right? So be, you know, I guess as guarded as you can while also recognizing that you know closed mouths don't get fed right and so like connecting reaching out to folks doing all the things like that's only going to be beneficial to either your personal brand which people are buying and or you know your the brand that you're building um so yeah so i was i was was glad to be there and made some good connections Yeah, I feel like that's really good advice. Um, I know when we were there, Sam and I were working the booth and we met so many people who were just starting out and they were like, you know, I'm not ready for 8Fig yet, but like, what advice do you have? And I was like, you're doing everything right by being here and connecting and networking and meeting these people. So um, for those of you listening, definitely get out there to some events. It's it's really beneficial for sure. Um, Cool. So kind of like skipping directions here but like so what are your future goals what are your plans for expansion what do you see for this brand yeah so my my thoughts on expansion is all about like thoughtful measured growth right like i don't see us and i don't want to say this isn't do it next week but i don't see us like you know dropping a spring collection and then a fall collection and like it's all about you know essentials like staples like things that you're going to want to wear now or you know classics and you know 20 years from now, right? Like you think of some of the classic items, like, and, and, you know, think of like the classic, like, like a trench coat, like, you know, about the name, the brand, like Burberry trench coat, right? Like that is something that, you know, you can, you, if they wore a hundred years ago, you could wear it today. Right. Um, And that's my like thought as we evolve the brand. Um, And so we're working on some new products now. Um, 
shifting a bit to wanting to like own like sort of the entire like lifestyle category for like our consumer, right? So, um, you know, as we we're, we're testing and looking at even like you know skin, you know skin like face body, you know, because like again like leveraging myself and my business partner like as like sort of consumer, I'm like, well, what do I buy? Like, what do I want to have better in my life? Right. Like, and so there, and there's, there's a ton of things um, that we kind of came up with. So, um, you know, can't do everything all at once. Um, but, but so it's, it's definitely measured. Uh, we'll probably, we'll still continue in, you know, the, the apparel place, right? Like we want to be the outfitter uh, for folks who are like, who are doing something in their life. Right. And, and like, we want to be their go-to brand. Um, but it's always, again, going to be, you know, top quality looking at, for example, like, our shirts are produced in Peru um, because Peru uh, grows you know, Pima cotton is where, you know, our, our, the cotton is grown 60 miles away from, you know, our factory. It's That's the best cool. cotton in the world. Like we chose there, but if we look at other, like, let's say we decide, you know, leather shoes, right? Like likely we're going to choose, you know, a, a place in Italy, right? But there are other places that make great leather. Well, so I don't, I don't want to like deny that, but like mm-hmm. Italy or maybe like Mexico, right. Where, you know, there's top quality leather and, 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 more than just that, because you can you can send product or you can send the raw materials anywhere, right? But also the craftsmanship and the understanding of how to like develop those products, like it just matters, right? So, uh, but yeah, I'm working on um, a I guess I could drop like an alpaca uh, uh, product, right? We're going to keep it in Peru. Peru is what makes up. There's a lot of like reasons why I decided to use that fabric. Um, cool. <laughs> I also kind of create it as like my, my playground. Like I just love to like, I love to create, you yeah. know, I love to like just make things. Right. And so this are you is, the one drawing the designs and doing all of that or? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have a fashion background. So I was like, but again, like our designs aren't like, you know, we're yeah. not, yeah, <laughs> we're not, like, not uh, avant garde, like fashion. Right. Like, so right. Not, I mean, and it's like you said, you want this to be a brand that people can be wearing for years and right. it's not going to change. So yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, okay, so I want to switch to like some fun questions to sort of end this out. So I hope you're this ready. This has all been fun. This is all. I mean, it's all been it's fun, been fun, fun, but listening <laughs> things is fun as well. But it's been incredible. This is the unfiltered part of okay. the episode. <laughs> okay, let's okay, go. So I always ask this one, but what's the funniest thing you've purchased on a social media ad? The funniest thing. I don't know if it's funny, but like, or just like wacky. Like, yeah, yeah. So I, I have a dog that like I feel guilty when I'm like working all day and like you know, of course, like I, I take her out like you know to to use the restroom, but like she's like bored, right? And like she also doesn't like other dogs, so like I can't take her to a, a dog like you know like sitter or whatever that has other dogs. So I, there's like this little toy that like jumps around and like drops out like treats and stuff and I was like okay I need that like and I was like and I felt like I was like yeah they got me this ad got me right (laughs) but it was like so necessary because I'm looking at my dog like looking at me like hey time to play and I like can't yet so that's that was a a great buy I love that I keep getting hit with the ad that throws the tennis ball out of a machine so that I don't be outside doing it my I have a golden retriever so he's obsessed yeah Tennis they balls. Run and catch something and bring it he back. wants to be catching something. And so I'm, I keep getting hit with that ad and I'm tempted to just do it. Just, just do it. it I'm like, I'm working too. So sometimes I can't entertain the dog all day. <laughs> the so. problem will be, will the dog know to drop the ball back into the machine or how many balls of the machine hold? You, like I think it holds like that. maybe two or three, but you have to like train the dog to drop it back. Exactly. So, so it's, it's more work. Right. You got to do that. But that's also a lot of work to train. <laughs> right, right. They're smart dogs, so maybe they're they'll... smart. They're <laughs> smart. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so another one. Um, so, what fashion trend right now do you just really dislike, or you think is like so tacky? Fashion trend that I think is tacky. And if you don't um, have an answer, that's fine. Or if it's something weird. No, 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 no. Like, um, <laughs> so like everything's moving to oversize. Um, mm-hmm. Oversize isn't for everyone. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> right. Uh, there was a time in which, like, I think we moved from like crop cropping things are still there as well, like, or or matching and pairing the two, one oversized, one shorter, whatever. Um, ultimately, I think it's important. This is like, I guess, speaking to like our customers, like, find your like find what makes you comfortable. Right. right. Like don't chase 
sort of like trends, right? Like you can maybe add something if you like into sort of the mix, right? If that's the like person you are, like want to be a little bit daring, but don't feel like you have to chase like anything out there, right? Like, like, yeah, you, like you define your style, like, and come with that pr- point of view and like, just be comfortable in that. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Um, so yeah. So the baggy thing, so no Jenko's coming back. You think? Well, see, here's the thing. I'm learning it by, <laughs> by experience because like I bought a couple of things. I'm like, yeah, no, it, it works, but this doesn't work everywhere. Right. Like, you right. know, yeah. <laughs> I'm also I'll getting like, by, like I, I kind of go all over the place. <laughs> That's just who I am. Though. That's what my idea yeah. So. I don't really have like one set style. I feel like some yeah. days I want to be like really trendy and wear the coolest whatever. And then other days I'm like, I just want to wear jeans and a t-shirt and my Your Converse. Go-to. Exactly. And my go-to and just be comfortable. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, okay. So if you had to pick one word to describe, I'm going to say it wrong again. Bow- I'm so bad at these things. Go ahead. <laughs> go, go, go. Now, I'm, <laughs> now I'm so in my head. Bow, bow, bad. Is it? No, say bow, it again. Bow, bow, if I no, what was the question? I'm sorry. Oh, if I had, if you had one word to describe it, what would it be? Oh, my company. Yes. <sighs> my baby. <Right. laughs> I like in, that. In, in all the sense of the words, right? Like, <laughs> like it's it's a lot. You have to keep feeding it, growing it, nurturing it, uh, keeps you up at night. Like, but then you're so proud of it as it grows and expands and, and all the things. So yeah, you know, yeah, it's definitely the the baby that I've somehow birthed. So. <laughs> Love it. Okay, my last fun question, and I don't think I gave you this question in advance, so no pressure, but are there any influencers or celebrities that you would love to have endorse your your brand? Influencers or celebrities, okay. Um, you would see sure. me. Yeah, yeah, so like, you know, Pharrell would be amazing. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, yeah, uh, Jay-Z would be amazing. Um, yeah. Beyonce would be amazing, right? Like, and I think about, so, and I say that because like, um, like, we, like for our customers, we have a significant number of, of women customers who are likely not 100 percent or not exclusively buying for guys in our lives. But like like women make the decision oftentimes for the guys in our lives. Right. And so um, we find that like, you know, women influencers have been uh, well, they're influencers on, on everything in their household, but they've been effective for us. Um, I'm sure there's like a lot more that like, I don't want to leave out, but there's, I mean, there's a ton, um, of really? folks, a ton of fashion folks. Um, also I, I want to explore more of the, you know, I guess business influencer folks, like who talk to our customers. That's sort of thing. Totally. That's awesome. Um, kind of on that note, I just saw another one of our customers was actually featured on the today show today as like must have products for your home. Yeah. Um, so it'd be cool. I could see you on there for like a Christmas list for him kind of thing or yeah, something. That would be fantastic. You Give should look call. into that one. Give me a call NBC. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was That's called NBC. Cool. Say, hey. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for joining me today. This has been really fun to chat with you. Uh, before we go, I wanted to give you a chance to share um, your website, your social channels, um, just so people can find you. Yeah, for sure. Check us out. Um, you can buy the perfect polo on our website uh, at www. And I'm going to spell it out for you. B-A-O-B-A-B clothing.com. That's B-A-O-B-A-B-Clothing.com. And then our handles for social. You can follow us on Instagram, TikTok. And if you want to go to Facebook, you can do that as well at, um, at B-A-O-B-A-B polo um, is our handle. And that's B-A-O-Polo uh, as the handle. Awesome. Thank oh, you sorry. so much. B-A-B, Polo, sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Cool. Well, thank you, Brandon, so much. I enjoyed this. Um, and then until next time, this has been Ecom Unfiltered. Mm-hmm.